Picture this, it's the 1920s, and women smoking in public is considered taboo. Yet suddenly, images of fashionable women, cigarettes elegantly held between their fingers, begin appearing in magazines, newspapers, and even during a prominent parade. Was this a spontaneous shift in social norms, or a carefully orchestrated campaign designed to make smoking socially acceptable for a vast, untapped market? The answer lies in the mind of a brilliant and controversial figure, Edward Bernays, often considered the father of public relations. Bernays was a master of persuasion, a man who understood that behind every purchase, every vote cast, and every social trend lies a complex interplay of psychology, symbolism, and carefully crafted messaging. Bernays, born in Austria in 1891, brought a unique perspective to the world of marketing and communications. He was, notably, the nephew of Sigmund Freud, the famed psychoanalyst. This connection had a profound influence on his approach. Bernays realized that humans aren't driven solely by rational thought. Our decisions are often fueled by unconscious desires, fears, and a deep-seated need for social approval. He would leverage these insights to engineer consent, transform public opinion, and sell everything from cigarettes to political ideology. Bernays's career began in the realm of press agentry, essentially promoting individuals, events, or companies through media coverage. However, he had a far grander vision. Bernays believed that influencing public opinion was crucial not just for commercial success, but for the smooth functioning of democracy itself. He coined the term public relations, transforming a somewhat unsavory profession into one focused on strategic communication and what he termed the engineering of consent. Bernays understood that in an increasingly complex and media-driven world, facts weren't enough to change people's minds. To truly persuade, he had to tap into emotions, create social movements, and connect products or ideas with powerful symbols and societal aspirations. Consider one of his most infamous campaigns, when hired by the American Tobacco Company to increase cigarette sales among women, Bernays knew he couldn't simply run ads touting the health benefits of smoking, which were, of course, non-existent. Such an approach would have been not only misleading, but also ineffective. Instead, he devised a more subtle and ultimately more successful strategy. He staged a spectacle during the 1929 Easter Sunday Parade in New York City. He hired a group of young, fashionable women specifically debutantes known for their social standing, to march in the parade while conspicuously smoking cigarettes. He cleverly dubbed their cigarettes Torches of Freedom. The press, always eager for a sensational story, ate it up. Photos of these well-dressed women smoking spread like wildfire across newspapers and magazines. Suddenly, smoking wasn't just about the product itself. It became associated with images of female empowerment and independence. This brilliantly orchestrated stunt exemplifies Bernays' approach. He wasn't directly selling cigarettes. He was selling a lifestyle, a sense of rebellion, and a carefully crafted association with the burgeoning women's rights movement. Bernays' strategy was ingenious for several reasons. First, by using well-respected socialites, he imbued cigarette smoking with an air of glamour and social acceptance. Second, the use of the term torches of freedom created a powerful symbol that resonated with the changing social climate of the time. Women were fighting for greater equality, and Bernays cleverly positioned smoking as a symbol of liberation and defiance against social constraints. Finally, the element of surprise and the fact that the event unfolded organically, fueled by media coverage rather than blatant advertising, added to its credibility and effectiveness. Bernays' genius lay in his ability to identify the hidden levers that influence human behavior. He understood that we crave social approval, that we are drawn to symbols of authority, and that our desires often outweigh our rational judgments. Let's delve deeper into some of his primary tools of persuasion. One key element of Bernays' strategy was the use of third-party endorsements. He recognized that people are more likely to trust information or buy a product if it seems to be endorsed by experts, celebrities, or figures of authority. For example, to normalize and popularize bacon for breakfast, he enlisted a physician to tout the health benefits of a hearty meal in the morning. This endorsement, although scientifically questionable, carried weight due to the doctor's perceived expertise. 
Bernays realized that trust could be manufactured by carefully selecting the messengers rather than relying solely on the merits of the message itself. Bernays also understood the power of symbols. He knew that an image, a catchy slogan, or even a particular color could evoke strong emotions, bypassing rational thought and forging a direct connection with consumers' unconscious desires. Think back to his Torches of Freedom campaign. The very phrase carried profound symbolic meaning, associating cigarettes with the ideals of liberty and women's liberation. Symbols, by their very nature, simplify and condense complex ideas into easily digestible visual cues. Bernays was a master at manipulating these cues to associate products or concepts with positive emotions and aspirational identities. He further revolutionized public relations by pioneering techniques aimed at stirring up unconscious longings and insecurities. He understood that people are not always upfront about the real reasons behind their purchase decisions. A woman might not buy a new dress simply because it's practical, but because she hopes it will make her feel more attractive and confident. Car advertisements often focus not just on the vehicle's specifications, but on the sense of freedom, status, or adventure it promises to provide. Bernays recognized that in order to persuade, one must first understand the deep-seated motivations of the target audience and tailor their messaging accordingly. He often used surveys, focus groups, and other forms of market research to uncover people's hidden desires, anxieties, and social aspirations. Armed with this knowledge, he could then craft campaigns that didn't just sell products. They sold lifestyles, solutions to unspoken problems, and a sense of belonging. Bernays' approach wasn't simply about creating positive associations. He also understood the power of tapping into anxieties and social fears. For example, he famously promoted a new book by playing on people's fear of being left behind. He strategically placed copies of the book in prominent locations but left them unopened, with just a single, intriguing sentence visible. Curiosity peaked. People flocked to bookstores to purchase the book, eager to discover what hidden message lay within. This tactic, while manipulative, exemplifies Bernays's genius for understanding the psychological undercurrents that influence human behavior. It's important to understand that Bernays didn't view his work as merely manipulative. He believed that the masses were often irrational and incapable of making informed decisions on their own. His techniques, as he saw it, were a way to guide society, to steer people toward choices allegedly in their best interest, be it buying a certain product or supporting a particular political candidate. This paternalistic view of mass communication raises a crucial question. Did Bernays' tactics empower consumers, or did they exploit human vulnerabilities for profit and social control? As with any figure who wields great power and influence, the legacy of Edward Bernays is a complex and ethically charged one. Let's examine the criticisms and controversies surrounding his impact on the world. Critics of Bernays argue that his techniques undermined true consumer choice, turning citizens into unwitting targets of psychological manipulation. They accuse him of exploiting people's anxieties, preying upon insecurities, and creating artificial needs in order to sell products or ideas. His focus on stirring up emotions rather than presenting factual information is often seen as a disregard for the public's right to make informed decisions based on reason and evidence. Consider the ethical implications of the Torches of Freedom campaign. While it undoubtedly succeeded in making cigarette smoking socially acceptable for women, it did so by linking a harmful product with the noble ideals of feminism and liberation. Ultimately, his campaign played a role in normalizing a behavior that we now know has devastating health consequences. Can a skilled manipulator ever be morally justified, even if they achieve immediate success in shifting public opinion? This is a question that continues to haunt Bernays' legacy and raises concerns about the long-term consequences of such persuasive tactics. Moreover, his belief in the necessity of an intellectual elite guiding the masses towards correct choices is inherently antithetical to democratic values. Bernays' work calls into question whether the power to shape public opinion should reside in the hands of a select few, no matter how well-intentioned they claim to be. When powerful figures or corporations employ Bernays-like techniques, the very foundation of informed consent in a democracy is threatened. However, 
It's crucial to remember that Bernays was operating in a world where advertising and public relations were in their early stages. He undoubtedly paved the way for modern marketing techniques, and the ethical scrutiny his work receives today is partly a positive testament to evolving cultural norms around transparency and consumer protection. The rise of social media and its ability to precisely target audiences with personalized messaging has taken the potential for persuasion and manipulation to unprecedented levels. Digital marketers now have access to a trove of personal data, behavioral patterns, and psychological insights that Bernays could have only dreamed of. While modern PR professionals might not directly reference his work, the core strategies of exploiting social anxieties, manufacturing viral moments, and associating brands with emotionally charged symbols are all descendants of Bernays' pioneering efforts. Yet modern social media platforms also offer potential for consumer empowerment. Information, while it must be carefully vetted, is more widely accessible than ever. Online communities mobilize to critique unethical marketing practices and share resources on critical media literacy. These grassroots reactions to Bernays' F legacy hold a key to reclaiming individual agency in the information age. Furthermore, Bernays' work has sparked a vital conversation about the ethics of public relations and the potential dangers of propaganda. His tactics serve as a cautionary tale, reminding us of the need for transparency and accountability in communication practices. Regulatory bodies and industry associations are now grappling with how to establish ethical frameworks for the public relations field in the digital age. One way to mitigate the negative impacts of Bernays-style persuasion is to promote media literacy education, equipping individuals with the critical thinking skills to decode manipulative messaging and identify hidden biases is essential for navigating the complex information landscape of the 21st century. Consumers who understand the mechanics of Bernays techniques are far less likely to fall prey to them. So, how do we balance the need for businesses and organizations to communicate and connect with audiences with the necessity of protecting the public from unchecked manipulation? Let's take a look at the world of PR today and how modern consumers can become more savvy. While Edward Bernays laid the groundwork for modern public relations, the landscape today is infinitely more complex. Social media, with its ability to disseminate information and misinformation at lightning speeds, presents both challenges and opportunities for PR professionals. Bernays's strategies have evolved and taken new forms. Think about targeted online advertising, carefully curated social media feeds designed to keep us engaged at all costs, and the relentless notifications that vie for our attention. While these tools might seem far removed from the cigarette-wielding debutantes of the 1920s, the underlying principle remains the same, shaping public perception and encouraging desired behaviors, whether it's making a purchase, sharing a piece of content, or forming an opinion on a social issue. The rise of influencers is a prime example of Bernays' understanding of endorsements in the digital age. Instead of paying traditional celebrities, brands now partner with social media personalities who have built a loyal following. These influencers often present themselves as relatable, everyday people, blurring the lines between genuine recommendations and paid promotion. Their personal brands become intertwined with that of the businesses they represent and trusting followers might not always discern where authenticity ends and hidden marketing begins. Social media creates an environment where emotion often trumps logic. Viral content, designed to trigger outrage or provoke a strong emotional response, spreads rapidly, often outpacing careful fact-checking and nuanced discussion. The algorithms governing what we see online prioritize engagement, and Bernays' understanding of human psychological triggers plays perfectly into this dynamic. Controversial figures, sensational headlines, and divisive online battles generate clicks and shares, even if they degrade public discourse and fuel further polarization. However, it's crucial to remember that social media doesn't just provide powerful tools for manipulators. It also allows for unprecedented transparency and the potential to hold corporations and influencers accountable. Consumers today can more easily research brands, call out unethical marketing practices through comments and social media posts, and connect with communities of like-minded people 
who value ethical advertising and promote evidence-based information sharing. To be savvy consumers of information in the modern age, here are a few tips inspired by Bernays' methods, but employed to reclaim agency rather than be controlled. Be aware of your triggers. What makes you feel insecure, excited, or indignant? Identifying your own emotional hot buttons can make you less susceptible to messages designed to provoke those reactions. Social media platforms are particularly adept at exploiting these triggers, and recognizing your own vulnerabilities is the first step towards developing a more critical perspective. Consider the source, who is delivering the information, and what might their motivations be. Differentiate between credible news sources, established with a history of fact-checking and journalistic integrity, and personal opinions, influencer posts, and advertisements. Look for signs of bias and hidden agendas, and be wary of information presented as fact when it comes from a source with a vested interest in a particular outcome. Look for the symbolism. What images, colors, or words are used to create an emotional association? Separate emotional appeals from factual information. Bernays understood the power of symbolism, and modern PR professionals continue to leverage this technique. Be aware of how visuals and language are used to evoke positive or negative associations, and don't mistake emotional resonance for factual accuracy. Seek out diverse perspectives. Curate your social media feeds to expose yourself to viewpoints beyond your existing bubble. Actively search for counter-arguments and alternative interpretations of events. Algorithmic filtering can create echo chambers where we are only exposed to information that reinforces our existing beliefs. Challenge yourself to seek out diverse perspectives and be wary of sources that only present a one-sided narrative. Edward Bernays' legacy is undeniable. He forever transformed the way businesses, politicians, and even nonprofits communicate with the public. His understanding of human psychology, the power of symbols, and the techniques for shaping public opinion continue to be relevant, even as the tools and platforms evolve. Whether we admire his ingenuity or fear the manipulative potential of his methods, his work forces us to confront the uncomfortable truth. In an age saturated with media, our opinions, our choices, and our very understanding of reality are never entirely our own. They are constantly being influenced, shaped, and sometimes outright engineered by forces we may never fully comprehend. The battleground for truth and persuasion has shifted from newspapers and radio broadcasts to our social media feeds and personalized search results. Bernays' legacy underscores the importance of being not passive consumers of information, but active and critical participants in the ongoing struggle to discern truth amidst the manufactured realities of the 21st century.